I, I guess I've been working with embryo freezing in horses for on and off for about six or seven years. And the project really grew out of my frustration with our inability to freeze horse embryos successfully with acceptable pregnancy rates compared to other species like cattle and sheep where it's commonplace. So it really grew out of that as well as an interest in cryobiology, which is the science of freezing cells that I developed starting in my graduate work. Um, what I find most interesting about my research, I think, is the difference in horse embryos compared to other species, that they're so much larger and that they have this protective capsule around them which makes them very, very hard to freeze. The benefit to the horses themselves is really about preservation of gametes, preservation of embryos. So being able to store the genetic material from a valuable animal so that we could store an embryo from a cross of a stallion with a mare might really be of interest to an owner but also benefit those genetics down the line. And in addition, if you think about endangered equids, the ability to store the genetic material from them would be of tremendous benefit. Gametes are eggs or sperm, and then embryos are the product of sperm and eggs. So the benefit to the horse owner of the research is that if we can successfully freeze horse embryos, embryo transfer suddenly becomes much more economically feasible. Uh, we can freeze and store the embryos and then transfer them into the surrogate mare who will carry the pregnancy, the recipient, for future use. So we don't have to transfer it at that specific time as with fresh transfer, but we can store the embryos and transfer it at a time that's convenient. Why is that cheaper? Well, because the recipients really represent the most expensive part of embryo transfer. And in a fresh transfer program, we have to keep two to three recipients per donor mare on hand at all times. And everyone knows how expensive it is to not only buy horses, but to keep them, feed them year round. And that's really, really expensive for embryo transfer. If the freezing procedure was mastered, I would see the commercial gain largely being in a worldwide ability to market horse embryos around the world, which we can't do currently, as well as in increasing its utilization because it would become much more cost effective to do. So breakthroughs we've made since uh, we started this study is we confirmed that our day 9 to 11 embryos, very little cryoprotectant does enter the embryo. And we've also discovered that very little water can make it out of the embryo. And the problem with water in the embryo when you freeze it is that it forms ice crystals when you freeze it and it either damages the embryo or the embryo explodes when you thaw it. And so we think that's why these embryos are dying. So Dr. Lebo continues to work with us on this project and we're working with him to devise new ways of getting water out of the embryo and cryoprotectants into the embryo. So horse embryos are so difficult to freeze because of their large size compared to other species. They also have a capsule, a glycoprotein covering that's unique to farm species. And that capsule seems to block cryoprotectant from entering the embryo to protect it during freezing. A cryoprotectant is a chemical that we use in a solution when we're freezing either sperm or eggs or embryos to help protect it from damage during freezing and thawing. That chemical might act inside the cell in which case it has to cross the cell or the embryo, or it might only act outside the cell. So for embryo transfer, especially frozen embryo transfer, to be commercially viable, the embryos that we collect normally when we flush a mare on day seven or eight need to be freezable. Right now, we can only freeze the much smaller embryos, the morula, that come into the uterus about day five and a half or six. Sometimes though, when we flush a mare's uterus on day six, we won't get an embryo. It's not in the uterus yet. So it lowers our success rate in embryo collection. And if we can't freeze the embryos we normally collect, it's not going to be commercially viable. The biggest challenge for us is getting enough embryos to do the work on uh, in mice or in cattle, especially cattle where you can super ovulate them and get a large number, number of embryos in one flush. In horses, we're looking really at one embryo per cycle per mare. So it's really difficult to get enough embryos to do meaningful work on and compare a lot of treatment groups.
So the next step for us in our research is to find other ways to get the carprotectin in and possibly the water out before freezing. Our research is funded by uh, Equine Guelph as well as OMAFRA, Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, in their donation of animals and facilities. We also have Partner Animal Health, who's donated uh, fluids and supplies for the research project. Uh, my graduate students, Dr. Gonzalez and Dr. Foster, who are working on this project as well. And their uh, stipends are funded through the Dean's Office scholarships as well as the DBSE program.